Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. This evening I thought it would be fun to do a little size comparison of some of the common traveler's notebook sizes or notebook sizes. Um, and along those lines, I had been wanting to try the Stalogy. This is the B6 that I've ordered. I waited to open it up, but I knew what was in there. So this is one of those things that for the longest time I was like, what's the big deal about that? And at first I wasn't at all interested in looking into it because I have been really satisfied with this system. Just the standard traveler's notebook, standard or narrow size, it's called both. Um, this is a pretty thick one, but I really liked this and I didn't really feel like I needed to try other notebook sizes. But then as you watch the videos and you see how other people use different sizes or something starts to feel too big or too small, it's kind of fun to um, play around with that a little bit. So, um, it's hard to narrow this down. Let, let's just look at this a second. So this one is the, <clears throat> it says 018 Editor Series, 365 Days Notebook, B6 size. The reason I ordered the B6 is I wanted to compare it to the B6 Slim. And here I have one of the um, Nanami Cafe Notes. This is in the B6 Slim size. It did come with a cover on it, but I took that off in order to insert it in my folio. So the B6 Slim I've really liked a lot. And that has caused me to not say that the standard isn't my favorite size, but if, if I had to narrow it down, it would probably be these two, the standard and the B6 Slim. The B6 Slim is a smaller version of this. This is pretty bulky because I have all these inserts, so let's just look at a regular size insert. And I have talked about this, so I don't, I'm getting a little bit off on a tangent, as I always do. But for comparison's sake, let's just take this out of the notebook. So you have your standard slash narrow, and you have the B6 Slim. So as you can see, it's shorter, and it's pretty much the same width. I printed this thing off of Yellow Paper House on Etsy. And they give kind of the size of their inserts, and I use that as sort of a, just a little guide so I know what's what. And as I've been learning these sizes, I refer to that often. So you can see why those two are similar, and if this is a favorite, this is going to be pretty close, too. Um, somebody mentioned on um, a previous video, I think it's when I was comparing standard, and B6 Slim that they will buy a standard size insert and just cut it down to fit the B6 Slim folio or Traveler's Notebook cover. And I thought, what a brilliant idea and why have I never thought of that? So thank you for that individual who did that. I appreciate that comment. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. So, two of my favorite sizes. <clears throat> and if you're new to this, this is another reason why I want to show you the comparison. So this is the standard narrow. This is the B6 Slim. This, however, is just the B6 size. So let's get back to this here. Um, basically, the B6 Slim, let's take that out too. That'll help not to have that in the way. Let's try to poke that there a little. Okay, so B6, B6 Slim. So it, the slim version of it is just a narrower version of this. I have found that I like these longer, narrower sizes. Or, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's probably a good, good definition. I also like the personal size, which is more rectangular. This is kind of bordering on, it, yes, it's a rectangle, but it's getting 
that blockier feel versus the more rectangle feel. So, not a big deal, just an observation, but that's why I bought this. Well, for two reasons. I have just been thinking it would be fun to have a little bit experience with all these basic sizes, at least these more common ones. Um, and so I was drawn to this for that reason, not too expensive of a purchase. It was maybe 18 something on Amazon. And it's just so funny because I'll see things and I'll see them, I mean, a couple years and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I want one of those. I want to try that. So that that's what happened here. This is the 365 day one, I think I mentioned, but let's just take a quick look at that. But I won't get too distracted because that's not my point here, really, to talk about this in that great of detail. Very faint writing on here. I mean, it's like a light gray. And gosh, I mean, I can't even read it. So maybe my glasses, maybe that it's <laughs> written in a language that I don't know. But I, I, I like this, and I think I'm going to like this for maybe more an artsy type journal. So if I want to play around with watercolors or I want to practice lettering, I mean, I don't do any of that. A whole lot but every so often I feel like doing that and I might use this for a meeting book for taking notes I, I'm not exactly sure my main thing was I wanted to see how it compared to this and if it would be a size that I might prefer for planning so currently did I bring it out yeah this is my planner this is a B6 Slim. This is a Sojourner cover. This is the Road Runner with, uh, it's like the natural leather. It is really getting a nice patina. Anyway, I love this cover. It feels so nice. So I just use this kind of setup here. It's like a Hobonichi Weeks setup. You got your week and your extra space. So I thought, well, if I decide this is too narrow, maybe Eventually switching to something like this might be fun, but the, um, knowing me, I would like to use it with a cover, and I don't necessarily want to buy another cover for this right now because I am happy with this. But I like the B6 Slim so much. It really is a toss-up between the two sizes, and I have stuff with both. This feels a little bit more easy to carry if I want to take my planner with me to uh, my son's orthodontist appointment to schedule a new one or doctors or dentists or whatever. Okay, the other reason I decided to get this allergy is I wanted to try another kind of paper so for fountain pens. So we all know that the, or if you don't know, the Tomoe, well actually let's back up a second. Let's just compare these sizes. So if you're new to this, you can see Better. So B6, <clears throat> B6 Slim. This is the passport size. I got this on Amazon. Uh, they had a special a while back, and I thought it was a pretty good deal. I mean, it's like not my favorite leather, but it was like $15, and it came with some inserts. Again, I was at the phase where I wanted to try new sizes and see what worked for me. For a while, I carried this in my purse. Um, primarily for a, well, just for the little calendar, so I wasn't over scheduling things. So I kind of was copying from our family calendar to my planner to this, and that started to feel too redundant, so I just kind of set this aside. I may use it yet. So we have B6, B6 Slim, Passport, and then in between there is the pocket size which is this. These field notes slash pocket are the same thing. These are really fun. These are parked themed books from fieldnotesbrand.com and Log and Jotter also does a does series of field notes. And I like this size too, but it's so narrow. It's not something I would go to on a daily basis for journaling. It's just a little bit too small of a page 
I think I'd feel like, you know, maybe to write about one day, I would be using three or four pages. So I didn't want to do that. What I have decided to do with these, though, is to journal to each of my grandkids. So if something comes up, one of them was just born, so I just talked to him and told him how welcomed he was and how excited we were to have him here, that kind of thing. And then the older ones, I'll discuss something I've seen them do or what I notice about them. So that's how this is used. It's a handy little size, but, well, I digress again. This is not my favorite leather, really. It's a little bit too thick and stiff for my liking. But anyway, so there we go. There's those sizes, similar. This is the passport, and this is the passport. This is field note slash pocket. And then the other one I want to just show you, and then we'll talk about the stylogy a little more, is this size. Okay, so I've heard this pronounced a bunch of ways. This is the Moleskin Expanded, which was a real fun experience to work in. I liked this book a lot. Um, and I finally got it almost full. There's just a little bit, but by that point, I, I was ready to kind of retire it, I guess you could say. Anyway, so this is the, like, well, let me show you. Let's measure it. So it's about five. I mean, it's kind of stretched out of shape by eight and a fourth. So that is what they call the Kaye, or looks like Kahir. Um, if it's French, it would have a little bit of the ear sound to it, the Kahir. So I don't know. I've heard it pronounced a bunch of ways, but I just learned that this is also referred to as wide. So let me explain that. So this is the narrow um, standard slash narrow. And I was like, okay, why does it have two different names? Well, because it's a narrow version of the regular or the wide Kahir or Kaye size. The Moleskin Expanded is my example here because that's all I have in that. I do have this one that I ordered from Jet, not Jet Pens, Goulet Pens, which is even wider. And I'm not sure what this one is. It doesn't fit in on my little chart. So we'll just dismiss that for now. Anyway, so it's kind of all starting to make sense to me why this was called wide. I'm like, wide for what? Or when people would talk about getting a traveler's notebook cover that was the wide version of this size, I'm like, I don't get it. So the standard is about eight and a fourth by four and a fourth or thereabouts. The wide is same height, but wider. So that's all coming together. And I was talking to a friend about this and I think she said this was also called, was the same thing as the A, five slim which maybe this is the a5 and then this is the slim version so there you know what that might be it if you know though please let me know because this one isn't on my chart this is five and three fourths by eight and a fourth if we open it up and measure it It's 11 and uh, almost three-fourths, about two-thirds maybe, and eight and a fourth. So I think this is like the standard paper size and then it's folded in half. I think this is a five, but like I said, it's not on my thing here. So again, I was just trying to compare. If that is accurate, then the A5 slim would be the Kaye slash this is moleskin expanded they're not necessarily the same and then this is the narrow version of this or this is the wide version of that so you can see how they're all kind of interrelated i don't know if that makes sense it does to me but who knows if i'm communicating okay back to the stylogy oh yes sorry one more size to show you and this is the a6 this is the md paper Got this on Amazon, and again, it was a size I was just kind of playing around with, seeing if 
that's something I would like to carry all the time. And I think with this, I've kind of determined it's smaller than I want. It would be a good thing to throw in a backpack or purse or tote bag or whatever for note taking or lists or something for me, but not probably for journaling. Just a little bit too compact and getting to that blockier versus long and narrow size. But that's another one. So this one is the A6. The way I remember that is it's like a four by six photo because I was getting that mixed up with the A5 and oh, there's so many, so many sizes. So this one is the paper I haven't tried yet. And I did bring my fountain pens out, see if I can find them. Don't know where I put them. Oh, here they are. I talked the other day about not liking the Twisby Medium Nib. I may have called it fine on my video. I was wrong with that. I don't have <clears throat> a fine point nib in my collection with the Twisby, my little mini collection. Um, but I had a couple inks in here. Well, I tried it with sepia by Diamine, and I just felt like it was dry, it was scratchy, and even though I thought that ink was really pretty on the samples that I'd seen, or even in when I was kind of using a little dip pen to play around with it, I liked it. I didn't like it coming out of here, and I concluded that I didn't like the Twisby medium nib. But I changed it to this ink after I did that last video. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to write it in here because I don't like that as much. Let me find my sample book. Here we go. This is the little B6 slim size I got from Goulet Pens. When I put in this brown ink, which is, forgot the name. Oh, where's my notebook on that? I've got notebooks everywhere. Here it is. Okay, this is a Monteverde Scotch Brown. And I really like the nib with this wetter ink. So let's just write that out. It's got some good shading. It's got a bit of a thicker line, but it's not... It's not obviously as thick as the broad, but it's a nice big line. Bye, Noah. Um, my, just say goodbye to my son. Um, I, I like it, and so I like the nib. I was all saying, don't like the medium nib. It's too scratchy. It didn't seem to flow well. I was kind of disappointed, you know, that I even bought it. But with this wetter ink, it works so much better, and it's really right up there. It, it writes similarly to the Twisby medium nib. Um, this is, I'll just write, uh, I meant, I didn't mean Twisby, Lamy medium. And this medium even seems a little bit broader. <clears throat> Maybe this is a wetter ink. But they, this one writes so nice. I really like the medium nib with the right ink. So that was kind of a fun experiment to try different inks and see, was it the ink or was it the nib? And I guess that's the whole process with, with this hobby, as it is for me, is just discovering the best combinations. This is the Noodler's Heart of Darkness. I tried a sample of this um, because I read that it was a good ink for not only fountain pen friendly papers, but regular paper too. And I thought, well, that's going to be good because sometimes I'm just writing in my planner or, I don't know, scratching down a note about something and I don't want it to be an awful experience, but I like the idea of using these on an everyday basis. So it was good to read about a ink that worked on normal paper, <clears throat> non-fountain pen friendly paper. So those are two samples, the Heart of Darkness and the 
scotch brown and I like them both and I'm planning on ordering a regular size <clears throat> bottle of both because now that I know that they work well, they're a wetter ink, they work great. Um, I know that that's a thing, wet and dry ink. I don't know what causes that. I don't know the makeup of the inks that would cause one to be one way and one the other. At least in this case, it seems like it was the ink and not the nib. So that was a good experiment. Okay, getting back to our main focus or our, the head of our little spider web conversation here, is, the center of that is the Stalogy. I wanted to try another paper that might be fountain pen friendly. Um, so let's go to the back. I kind of like doing that. I have read um, a couple comments on this paper that it was good for our fountain pens and other people have said that. There have been a few that have commented, no, it's not good for fountain pens. So I thought, well, I'll find a use for it anyway, but I, I did want to experiment with the different papers and just come up with a favorite. Maybe there's a favorite that's more economical than another. So since I'm really enjoying the Noodler's Heart of Darkness and the Monteverde Scotch Brown, I thought I would just do a quick thing with that. So let's just again write the um, ink brand here. Oh, and this is something too. My husband was testing some of these inks with me, just uh, trying to see where he might have written down his opinion. I had him just write like so here he was writing with the different inks that I had in my pens and he made the observation that if you're writing on a less cushioned surface, like he had one that was like this where there was the page and then like the back cover or maybe one or two pages and he didn't like it as well but then when he was writing in a different notebook um, and it was more on the opposite side where there's more pages underneath. He liked it better and I thought, ah, that was something that I might not have noticed. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but if you're not thinking along those lines, you might not make that connection. So I wanna do the cushier version and see how I like this Stology paper with this. And then we'll just do one and some of the others and you can, um, see what that's like. So if you are thinking of buying a notebook that you can use with your fountain pens or you're thinking of buying a fountain pen and you're wondering what papers might work with it or inks. I mean I'm totally newbie at this but this is a fun discovery so let's let's see how this works and maybe that'll just add some insight to you if you're watching for any of those reasons. So again this is the Noodlers, that's the brand of ink. The ink is Heart of Darkness. And this is a good all-purpose ink meant for any kind of paper. But I do like it here. It's a big, bold line. And I, I, I do gravitate towards that versus a fine. I only have one fine nib, and that's in my... Moon Man Wan Kai Mini, which is over at my son's house now. Okay, let's try the Monte Verde. Um, what did I say this was? Yeah, Scotch Brown. We'll do that underneath here. So I feel like this paper so far is doing real nicely with these. And then this is the Lamy Pen Medium Nib. This one you just pull off, those you twist, and this is a, um, a Lamy ink inside in a cartridge rather than in this demonstrator type model. This is a nice bold line too, and I really love the feel of this and writing with it. And it's funny because um, I like both styles. I love how these look. I really like seeing the ink. To me, that's super fun. This you don't have that same experience, but I've got to say I, it would be a toss up to pick which one I like writing with better. But looks wise, I have more fun with this, but this is kind of a nice sleek pen too and super handy and I'd feel much more comfortable maybe carrying this around because I think it's a little less likely 
to leak. Not that those would necessarily, but if they unscrewed somehow they might. Okay, so this is Lamy and this is the tourmaline. So, very pleasant with all those. These are wetter inks in my experience based on my limited number of inks. I have two so far that are I don't know what makes them dry or wet. Please tell me if if you know, other than the nib um, being part of that. But they just flow and it feels really nicely. Okay, but this is a non Tomoe River paper. I don't know exactly what you'd call it. I need to look at that a little bit more and figure out what the weight is. But it is seems to me to be fountain pen friendly. I'm not seeing that what they call that feathering or and it didn't feel scratchy at all. Now some of the ones that are supposed to be fountain pen friendly like this MD paper. I've had mix, mixed results with this and again I think it had to do with the type of ink. I wrote some there already but let's just try that again. So Oh, I remember the twist. So let's just do the Noodler's Heart of Darkness. You don't want to see me writing this same thing over and over, probably. I feel like that writes pretty well. I almost feel like there's just a, like if I touch this paper, it all feels really smooth, maybe ever so slightly more what they I think call feedback. Uh, scratchy doesn't sound right. I always say that and that's probably not good. But okay, so like this one, this Monte Verde Scotch Brown, I don't like so much on this. I liked it okay here. If you can see, the lines seem to come out, um, the lines, the writing, wetter, thicker, and it feels just uh, drier here, like the paper's just soaking it up. It's not gliding in the same way. And then let's just do Lamy. So yeah, um, about the same. I, like, I, I do like it better on this. I like it better on the Stalogy than the MD. And on my past little writing test. I have liked it on the, the Tomoe River. This one is 52 GSM and let's see what my um, Nanami notes, I forget. That's 52 GSM also. This I really like writing with with the fountain pens and it makes writing fun, you know, you want to pick it up and write with. All the rest are Tomoe River. Um, I do sometimes journal in here. This is my everyday type journal. I mentioned this the other day where I just do events. This is the craft paper and I, it just doesn't work as well with the inks. It's much rougher and it absorbs the ink up a little more readily. And then this one I also showed and I feel like um, this paper might be comparable to, yeah this is 100 GSM, let's just try that a minute. Almost seems like this one is similar to the Astology, but let's, let's do it while it's fresh in my mind here. Let's see Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Sounds so sinister. So I am getting a nice, wet, thick, bold line there. I like that. Let's try the Monteverde. Scotch Brown. That's pretty good. It's kind of funny though, I think that my favorite way of using this Monteverde Scotch Brown is on the Tomoe River paper. I did this the other day, it got a ton more shading. Um, 
and it just had that more glidey feel to it. But, you know, I think that the, the Noodler's Heart of Darkness ink is such a wet, hearty ink, maybe, I don't know if that would be a right way of describing an ink, but it just goes on bold and wet in a variety of these kinds of notebooks. And then this is Lamy Tourmaline. Oopsie, there we go. I've seen it with the O and without the O, but I think it's without the O. So like, these work, they're okay, but definitely the Tomoe River paper, and I think this Stology is going to be a good runner-up for me. I did um, try the Claire Fontaine the other day, and it, I had high, I had very high expectations for it, and I was a little bit disappointed. I obviously am not a paper connoisseur, but I didn't get that sense that it was gliding as easily, that it was as um, smooth of a paper. I don't have that one in front of me, I don't think. Let me see, maybe I do. Nope. Um, so we'll not worry about that. But, yeah, so all that to say, I think that this will be a good new fountain pen edition. Those three worked pretty well on here. These two inks better than the Scotch Brown. I just think that just better overall on the Tomoe River. And then with the last thing, let's try. Let's just try it here. Now I know some people, I mean, I loved writing in this, but I wasn't doing the fountain pen thing when I was. So let's kind of did it here. So when I tried my Twisby broad nib with uh, Green Marine ink by Noodlers, there's like, it wasn't a fine line, it kind of spread that feathering and then the sepia was, didn't like it on there at all. So that, that goes okay. I just, eh. Not sure. Um, let's see. Let's do this one more time. Definitely don't like this as well. It's funny, like this medium nib on the wrong paper doesn't work. And it doesn't even look as nice on this. So that's funny because I didn't have any problem using this for a journal, but I wasn't using fountain pen. The Noodlers, again, is, is working everywhere. So that's an interesting comparison for me. I think it really does help to have the right kind of paper for the fountain pen experience to be what it should be. And then uh, getting back to the ones that I've talked in to my grandkids, this is the little books for them. Kind of a mixed result. I don't always feel like these papers work real well with it or they'd write for a while and then they would get scratchy and dry out and I don't know if that's because I'm writing too quickly or what but I think having again the Noodler's Heart of Darkness ink in this broad nib will be a good way to use my fountain pens in this kind of journaling but some of these others I feel like they're just doing better on like the Tomoe River paper of the varying weights. And then um, the MD paper I showed you, that was the little floral five by six. Let's do one last test. And we'll do the more cushy side here. This little strap thing is really in the way. see if I like this. It feels smooth, but then sometimes when you're writing with it, it, you know, it kind of feels uh, scratchier than you think. I'm actually liking that. That goes on well. It's a real wet ink. Like I said, I can see the wet spots. I don't have my blotter paper in front of me. I need to get more of that. Got one piece with the Naname Cafe Notes. 
that's really nice. So this one writes pretty good. I'm getting a little bit more of that, uh, for lack of a better word, scratchy, but it doesn't feel scratchy, but you can hear it along the page, like scraping. And then again, the Monte Verde. Scotch brown. That one's okay. Again, I think the same conclusion that with the less, I don't want to say quality, but maybe it's quality or just different kind, but the, the Tomoe and the Stalogy, I think I'm liking the medium nib better. I know that I like this ink, but it has to be in the right pen with the right paper. The others, these other two are doing okay, but this one is the big, the big iffy one overall. So there, that, that was my thing for tonight. I just wanted to point out what I have learned in case that helps you. I mean, some of it's obvious and I'm just, you know, slow. <laughs> To putting two and two together, but kind of understanding the interconnectedness of all these sizes, how they work together, what it means for something to be wide or slim in relation to another size, and also just wanting to compare what papers work best for my limited collection of inks and pens. I am enjoying these a whole lot having fun finding just the right inks. It is good to get the samples. I would suggest that before you buy the bottle, but that paid off because I have two now that I want to get. The Noodler's Heart of Darkness and the Monteverde Scotch Brown, but I know that I will like those if I use them in certain notebooks. So here's the new Stalogy. I like the 365 idea. Maybe I'll do some kind of challenge with writing something each day for a year. Uh, I wanted to try this too in case I wanted to maybe do a similar idea as I had done in here, which was poems and drawings and reflections and this and that. Just kind of a little bit of a, as I put here, creative and memories, just a miscellaneous journal. But so far I feel like I have enough things it's defined well enough that I don't need to keep expanding out. I think my system works pretty well. The only thing I did <laughs> break down and do was order a, another cover. It was on sale, but I want to switch it out for this so that these little booklets for the grandkids will fit better. And I really would like to find a home for this if you're interested. This is the Pelican Chic Sparrow um, pocket slash field note size. It's a nice leather. I don't know, it just doesn't resonate with me. Nothing wrong with it. I did kind of try to roll it a little to give it some texture and rough it up, but anyway, that's that. So I'm going to use that new notebook for that. So here's all my sizes, all my various B6 slims, B6, A6. I, have gotten to where a lot of these are just little notepad things and pen experimentation, but it's been fun. It's a fun hobby. Haven't used, I'm assuming, A5 yet. I keep thinking I want to write stories and I haven't gotten around to that. Make some little short stories or things that my older kids have told me I should write. So anyway, there you go. I hope that was interesting and maybe helpful to some of you that are embarking on the fountain pen or new paper or new traveler's notebook sizes that you want to try out that this gave you a visual. It helps me to see the sizes in comparison to other sizes. That's always been really helpful to me, so maybe that helps you too. Thanks. Appreciate your watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.